Hello and welcome back everyone for the second part of human health and diseases. Last time we studied what is health, what is disease, what is immunity and types of immunity. In that we completed the first part of immunity that was innate immunity and the barriers present in innate immunity. Today we'll start with the second type of immunity that is acquired immunity. Acquired immunity is also called as adaptive immunity or specific immunity. It is called acquired or adaptive because it occurs after the birth. It is called specific immunity because it is specific in its action. That means a particular type of antigen fights with a particular type of antibody only. Here this acquired immunity has some unique features. Those features are specificity, diversity, discrimination and memory. Let us come towards the details of all these four unique features. First one is specificity. That means it has ability to differentiate various foreign molecules. That means if there are number of pathogens present, it can differentiate those and it, it can fight with only a specific type of pathogen. Second is diversity. That means it can recognize a very vast variety of foreign molecules. Third one is discrimination. That means it can differentiate between self and non-self. If I say self, that means your own body cell. And non-self, that means the cell which comes from outside, that is antigen. And last one and fourth one is memory. That means when you fall ill, your body starts giving response to the antigen, immune response is produced in your body, immunity develops inside your body and this is called the first encounter. Now this, due to this first encounter, your immune system memorizes the type of antigen and the antibody which has given you relief. Now due to this what happens when there is a second encounter that means when second time you fall ill with same type of pathogen then as it is already already memorized by your immune system so your body brings about a quicker and stronger immune response. These were the unique features. Now coming towards the types of immunity. Types of acquired immunity. There are two types. One is active immunity and second one is passive immunity. Active immunity is again divided into two parts. That is natural active immunity and artificial active immunity. Whereas Passive immunity is also again divided into two parts that is natural passive immunity and artificial passive immunity. If I say the word active immunity that means your body is active. It starts the production of antibodies that means your body will develop the antibody that will be active immunity. If I say passive immunity. That means your body is not going to develop antibodies but 
it will receive antibody or the antibodies are passed into the body that's why it is considered as passive immunity now first we'll describe the active immunity in that natural active immunity so when you suffer from any kind of disease and you get well that means your body will develop the immunity you will develop antibody against that particular infection that will be considered as natural active acquired immunity and it is long lasting as i told you your body memorizes that for example if a person suffers from measles antibody will develop inside the body they will fight against those antigens and that person will recover it will retain that antibody it will memorize that antibody and it will be naturally produced second artificial active acquired immunity now here body has to develop the antibody but your body is not able to recognize then we can produce it artificially by giving vaccinations there are different vaccines available like polio vaccine bcg vaccines these vaccines are given to children prior to infection so that your body will start the production of antibodies which cannot be produced by your body and here vaccines are nothing but they are heat killed antigens or weak antigens which are produced or induced inside the body so that your body recognize that weak antigen and starts the production of antibodies this is sometimes temporary but sometimes they are permanent so this is artificially induced but your body will produce the antibody therefore it is called as active immunity now coming towards passive immunity natural passive immunity that means naturally antibodies has to be passed inside your body and that can be done or transferred from mother to fetus through placenta and second time after the birth of a child the mother can pass the antibodies to infant through the first milk that is colostrum but these antibodies which are passed from mother to fetus or mother to infant are short lived now artificial passive immunity this immunity has to be developed artificially inside your body that means antibodies has to be passed artificially and this can be done by injections here for example if a person is suffering from a disease called rabies he has to get antibodies through injections so how will we get these antibodies for example we know that horse are immune to this rabies so we will inject antigen inside the body of horse the horse will be hyper immunized then antibodies will be collected from the body of a horse from the blood of horse and then injections are produced and these ready made antibodies are now injected inside the human body but this type of antibodies are short lived so natural active immunity is long lasting but natural passive immunity is short lived artificial active immunity can be temporary or it can be permanent artificial passive immunity is always short lived now next part is cells of immune system there are two types of cells which are involved in working of immune system they are lymphocytes and 
antigen present in cells let us start with the first part that is lymphocytes lymphocytes are the main cells of immune system they actually arise by the process of hemocytoblasts that means your rbcs are ruptured to produce these lymphocytes and they are they arise from stem cells in fetus you will find these lymphocytes are found in liver whereas in adults they are found in bone marrow but actually whatever lymphocytes are present in bone marrow they do not develop inside the bone marrow some of them they travel they migrate through blood and enter inside your thymus gland some of them remains there within the bone marrow so those cells which mature within the bone marrow or they get inside the gut that is your tonsils or your pears patches such kind of lymphocytes are called as b lymphocytes or bursal lymphocytes and those which mature inside the thymus gland they are called as t lymphocytes both these lymphocytes are important for our body b lymphocytes always produces antibody mediated immune system that means they help in production of antibodies and t lymphocytes they help in production of cell mediated immune system that is they fight with antigen with the help of different types of cells so your we have got two types of immune system one is antibody mediated immune system and second one is cell mediated immune system antibody mediated is produced by b lymphocytes whereas cell mediated is produced by t lymphocytes now both these b lymphocytes or t lymphocytes they require antigen to come in action once antigen enters inside the body then they start giving response in different ways now first we'll study the response of t lymphocytes against antigen whenever any antigen comes in contact with your body these t lymphocytes they start developing the clones of t cells these clones of t cells starts performing different types of functions because they are although they are clones they are same type of cells but they have four different types of t lymphocytes that is they have helper t cells killer t cells suppressor t cells and memory t cells now once they produce a clone helper t cells what they do they are the most important part actually for your immune system they are the one which can distinguish exactly between the self and non self they can tell you which cells are body cells and which cells comes from outside so these t lymphocytes these helper t lymphocytes or t cells they start proliferating the other t cells because they get triggered by the presence of antigen and they start proliferation of other types of t cells along with this they also stimulate b lymphocytes and macrophages so that they can come and fight with antigens now once this t helper cells proliferate other t cells the first cell which comes is killer t cells the name itself indicates they are killer cells so they directly attack and destroy the microorganisms some of these killer cells what they do they bind with the infected cell and they start secretion of protein called perforins these perforins they start production of holes or the produces holes inside the in infected cells and due to this these cells are killed next one is suppressor t cells 
once the killer T cell will kill the cells now suppressor T cells will suppress the entire immune system so that your body cells will get protected against the attack of killer cell once suppressor T cells suppresses this immune system then memory T cells gets memorized and they get it previously sen sensitized cells so they uh, they memorize it so that it remain inside them for longer period of time so helper cell will detect the antigen it will proliferate with other types of t cells killer t cell will attack and destroy the microorganism by secreting a protein called perforin suppressor t cells will suppress the immune system after killing of antigen in order to avoid the body cell to get attacked and then memory cells they will memorize the type of antibody which has fought with the antigen now b lymphocytes what these b lymphocytes will do once t helper cell will sensitize b lymphocytes these b lymphocytes will become activated they start multiplying and they start production of clones now the clones of b lymphocytes will have plasma cells and memory b cells that cell which t was that was memory t cell here we are having memory b cell the plasma cells what they will do they will start production of glycoproteins that is nothing but antibodies these antibodies will circulate throughout your blood fluid that is in your blood as well as in your lymph blood fluids and then whenever they will find the antigen they will bind with it they will kill it sometimes it binds with antigen but most of the time it remains free so the possibility is that it may bind to a cell or it may remain free if suppose it remains free then the free antibodies have three main functions one is agglutination second one is optimization and third one is neutralization now agglutination means what whenever any bacteria or any virus enters inside your body these antibodies will agglutinate them that means it will make them immobilize difficult to move now because of that it will stay at one place only then macrophages will come and they will engulf it by phagocytosis second is optimization sometimes these antibodies they just coat the bacteria so that because of this coating macrophages it becomes uh, easier for macrophages to find those bacteria and to undergo the process of phagocytosis third one is neutralization that means whatever toxins are released by bacteria these free antibodies they neutralizes those toxins therefore we say each antibody is specific for particular type of antigen now second part of cells of immune system second cell is antigen presenting cells these cells they have got a function of phagocytosis that means they engulf the invading pathogen and they help in processing the antigen now how they process the antigen they present the antigen in such a way that they engulf it they coat it they release it and that processed antigen is present on their own cell surface now because of the coating this antigen will produce stimulatory signals these signals 
will activate helper T cell so that helper T cell can recognize the antigen and start with the production of other cells. So in this way your cells of immune system fight against different types of antibody antigens. I hope you understood it. Now next part is your vaccination. Earlier I told you vaccines. Vaccines are nothing but they are heat killed antigens or weak antigens. How will you define vaccine or vaccination? Administration of vac vaccine to protect against a particular pathogen is called vaccination. That means if you take a vaccine to protect yourself for any kind of pathogen, any kind of disease, then you can say that process is vaccination. Normally, you have got an immune system and that immune system helps you to protect against different types of pathogens which causes different types of infections. But sometimes what happens it is efficient almost for most of the time but sometimes these pathogens are so smart that your immune system cannot recognize them and they may cause serious illness and so your body cannot recognize them which type of pathogen it is that's why the serious illness continues in order to reduce that vaccination has to be done Vaccination is one of the way to teach the immune system how to recognize and how to eliminate the pathogen from the body. And it also protects people from getting sick. Now here, nowadays we have got a threat of a disease called coronavirus. Still we don't have any kind of vaccine. So once you get infected with that disease, your body won't be able to recognize. Your immune system will not be able to recognize the pathogen. So it will cause serious illness or it may cause even death. There were many different diseases that once threatened many lives. For example, polio, tetanus, Woofing cough, these all diseases were once very threatening type of diseases, but now we have vaccines for them. So maybe in future we'll be having vaccine for coronavirus also. And vaccines helps to protect the society. So today we'll wind up by completing the part of vaccination. How the vaccines are safe? How will you come to know that vaccines are safe? They are considered to be safe because they are rigorously tested. That means they are tested again and again. They pass through various types of study, various examination, various research and everything. So that before injecting or before vaccinating a public, a journal people, you will find it has been tested various times now the research and evidences has shown that because of various tests study examination and research these vaccines are safe and they don't have side effect and if so they have then those effects are very rare let us conclude here let us stop here today we have completed the second part of immunity that is acquired immunity we studied the cells of immune system two cells lymphocytes and antigen presenting cells then we completed with vaccination and now we know that vaccines are safe so let us stop here thank you stay home stay safe We'll meet you next time in next video.